how much criticism, if any, should fall at Conte's feet for some of the tactical decisions that he has made over the last four or five games with Chelsea, Southampton away, Watford, playing like Matt Doherty on left wing back, playing players out of position. And I think to go a bit further, it's is it because Conte is someone that tries to put players into his formation rather than picking a formation to suit the squad? And so if you agree with that or don't agree with that, do you allocate any of the frustrations that we sh- that we feel right now, especially after the Southampton game? Is any part of that Conte's fault? If so, sure. how much? And we'll start with Brian and then we can go to <laughs> Cooper and Ben. So, Like I said when I came on before, just or when I was talking earlier about when he did this, he's got to take some of the responsibility. Listen, just because we've got the most elite manager that we could possibly, in our wildest dreams, uh, 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 attempt to approach and get, he's there to do a job. He is there to do a job. And he very, very quickly realised with... Five minutes, OK. Thank you for my five-minute warning. Thank you. There you go. I've had the five-minute warning. <laughs> oh, God. Um, nice. Oh, nice. Mate, I, basically, my parents were there. Well, the men I have Shabbat dinner last night, but they, they went out for a late lunch, so they didn't do it. So I've got Shabbat uh, roast chicken, roast potatoes. And my mum makes the best roast potatoes in the world. So uh, I'll and that's not on, on the table. I'll no, fight. It's not, I'll five mate, minutes, mate. mate, it's not. <laughs> believe me, anyone, anyone that tries these agree. Believe me. Um, so, so, yeah. So getting back to, to the question at hand. Um, Conte, uh, listen, people know I will give Levy any criticism I can find, whether he tied his shoes on wrong or anything I can blame on Levy, I will blame him. But I am not just tunnel vision, let's blame Levy, let's blame Levy, let's blame Levy. Conte has to take some responsibility. Now, the responsibility kind of gets lifted a bit because he hasn't been back with what he needed. And I, I use the example of Ashley Young at Inter Milan. He needed a left wing back to sort a left wing back issue. He thought Ashley Young could do a job. And they went and got him. There's none of this, oh, what's his resell? Or he may not be here for long. It's like, if this is what's going to get you over the line, if you think this is going to help you get over the line, we'll go do it. And in that sense, I don't think he's been back correctly. Okay. We, we Listen, the, 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 the position we, listen, we've needed, and I know the right back is getting spoken ahead of a lot. We have gone, we have basically degraded every time we've bought a right back yeah. since Carl Walker left. Yeah. And it, this has been allowed to happen. That's no fault of the manager. That's recruitment and the person signing the checks. Play it, and it, and I honestly thought when he started playing Doherty at left back, I thought surely that's a, a cry to the board saying, "Listen, I need help in this position," yeah. which wasn't picked up on. Now, you can't blame him for having to play players out of position if the squad depth isn't as as deep as one would like. Um, oh my god, I just used one. How posh am I going? Um, <laughs> Right. Um, you're, about, you're about to have a roast dinner. You've got to go and get your table manners yeah, yeah, up. And you start yeah, by... Uh, I'm sorry, Sean. <laughs> Shopping dinners are the least posh events ever. There is <laughs> just insults thrown all over. There's chairs thrown. <laughs> Everyone calls each other and swat. Maybe you need to take this Order! with you. Order! 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 That's Do you know what? I'll, I'll put this down at the dinner table. And if I say, Sean, <laughs> you know what to do, yeah. then you just press that button when you see it. <laughs> nice. But getting back, getting back to what happened is, is he's playing players out of position because of the lack of the lack of depth. And like I said before, he did this at Chelsea when Arsenal thumped them 3-0. They were trying to play one formation. He realised, right, I can't play this formation. He went to a one that he went defaulted back to this fit 3-4-3 three, because three, he had the players. Or at least he had ten of them, and we didn't know Victor Moses was gonna gonna shine under him in the manner that he did. Yeah, and I think it comes to the point where he's got to say, Do you know what, this three four three, I fundamentally don't have as much as I want to play it, and as much as I'm drilling them, it's like what uh, I was talking to a man new friend of mine, a man new fan friend of mine, a uh, really good friend of mine, and he said after the game against Southampton, say Paul Scholes went and said, with the players, it's either they can't do what Raggy X asking. Or they won't do what Raggy is asking because they're like the oh he's only going to be here for six months he will fuck off and I think we've got a bit of that with not with Conte because they know he's here but I mean with the system they either yeah. can't do it or they won't do it and if that's happening all the time especially while top four is still mathematically uh, an extreme possibility he's got to say right I just can't trust the players in this formation. I need to play a formation where I can trust them. And then maybe next season, if we have the summer everyone's expecting, 
or people are expected, I won't say everyone, because I'm certainly not one of them, then he may be able to play that 3-4-3. So I think at the moment, he's got to take some credit. Not a lot, but he's got to take, or I'll say a lot. About to give it our percentage? Like 25 to 40%? Wow. Okay. Shit, it's got to be high, that's, he, that's, that's fairly high then, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, but it's because he keeps trying something that's not working. And mm-hmm. I know he's stubborn, and I know he knows how to get the best out of players, but he's just not got the players to play that formation. I believe he has got it to play a 3-5-2. I really do. Yeah, same. same. So, so, so I would say, like I said, when it comes to Conte, just because it's con- – you've got to remember, like like, like when – like what Ben said earlier, when everyone was starting to blame Ben Davis for having such a bad game, he didn't. He slipped at a yeah. really bad moment. And it's yeah. when people think memorable, that is him slipping. Is It's a freak thing that happens. He didn't pretend to, he didn't plan to slip or anything. It happened. But we go and j- blame the, the, the weakest links first. Straight away, it's their fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. And Conte, just because he is this great manager, doesn't mean. You can't say, well, I didn't agree with him there or or whatever. And I think he's got to take some of the responsibility. But the larger part of it is he wasn't back to play the formation in what he wants to play. So I'm going to take it down from 40%, 25 to 40, to 25 to 30%. Uh, that, made, oh, that makes me feel better. Yeah. And yeah. on that note, I'm going to go so I can get down. But if you're still going in like 45 minutes, yeah, come I'll back jump on. back on. Come I'll jump on. back on. Post. Uh, okay, guys. So where were we? I forget the question. Uh, what I asked. Uh, what was the question I asked Brian beforehand? It was about Conte, right? Conte. Do you think Conte deserves any of the criticism for you know some of the formations, the three four three? Like I made this point on um, on the Irish Hotspur and on Spurs related last night. I personally think that it was visible to me, clear to me, and to Dave when I was doing the watch along on the Irish Hotspur that. After 20 minutes, the formation wasn't working against Southampton. They were overrunning the midfield. And it was just a shit show waiting to happen. Me, uh, Dave, Jack and I were all calling out for Winks to get taken off or for Sanchez to be removed or Emerson to be, like make changes, go to a 3-5-2, try and suffocate their strength in midfield. Nothing happened in the first half. Not that I would expect a change to be made in the first half. Although, peak Mourinho, when Mourinho was at Chelsea and things weren't working, he was not afraid to make proactive decisions and then put his arm around the player that he took off and say, listen, it wasn't because of your performance specifically. I've got to do what's right for the team. And someone had to come off and it had to be you because the formation had to change. And then he went out afterwards in the press and doubled down on that and said it wasn't this particular player's fault, but the formation had to change. So I ha- we have seen proactive changes before when things weren't working. But what pissed me off even more is that nothing changed at half time. It took until the 65th minute for him to make changes. And again, you could point back to the Brighton game, even though we won the game 3-1, I don't think it was as comfortable as um, as we thought it was because we were winning 3-1. But, you know, Brighton had a lot of chances. And on a different day, you know, Mope could have put, put one away when, when there was, you know, bad mistakes. There was lots of chances for Brighton. And then I think if you if you flick back a little bit further, there were some decisions and questionable, questionable starting 11s that everybody on all of the channels that I've been on as a Tottenham fan, were all scratching their heads with. And I wonder whether or not some people give Conte, because Conte is the biggest name of a manager we've ever had, I wonder whether some people are afraid to say, because in Conte we trust, that he's, a you know, infallible or that he, you know, that, you know, he knows better than us. So therefore, who are we to, 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 to critique or question? I'm not someone who goes with that vibe. I think that you can critique, you can analyse, evaluate and, and review what the decisions were. And I don't think they've all been fantastic. How, how do you guys feel about Conte? Is he someone that fits the, the 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 players into a formation when he should fit the formation around the players? What are your thoughts? Kuva, we'll start with you and then come to Ben. Um, personally, I think Conte's not afraid to first um, back the players he's got a bit of trust in. So like keeping winks on the pitch, even when things are not going well, because this season he's got a realisation that He's not going to be challenging for the league. It's unlikely we're going to win the cup. We've got an outside chance of it, but um, it, he's he's not going to be looking at it as a realistic objective this season. So he's got to find out all he can about these players. Sometimes that means you've got to keep them on when the going is rough. You've got to see if they can drag something out of it, like drag something out of each other. I mean, even Tim Sherwood um, made a, a point about this. Players having to drag something out of each other at times. 
their mm-hmm. character. What what is there left in the locker when the going's tough? Um, you can't find out that if you always substitute them the moment the form dips. Sometimes you've got to leave them on for a bit and find out what they can do for the ninety minutes. Yeah. Um, obviously, it got to a point where he just thinks enough's enough. Benson has got to come on now. <coughs> yeah, but um, I do think Conte's not got a problem with changing things up, doing un- unpopular things. Um, like Stephen Bergwijn, he's probably looked at him at wing back. He probably has, and he's decided no. I do see him as the uh, backup striker. I do see him as the one that comes on, can grab a couple of goals out of nowhere. In some ways, you could say that's vindicated. He's done that. Um, now, uh, with 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 uh, blaming him, I think you'd blame him if uh, he's assembled a squad he wants at the moment. There's still remnants of uh, previous days, isn't it? So uh, he's he's trying out things. He's not afraid to experiment. He's getting to know the players, what they have in terms of character and ability and adaptability. And you you just can't do that overnight. So there's going to be a little bit more playing around before the end of the season. Um, I can't see any other way around it. Um, how, how are you going to find out if somebody can play in a new role if you don't play them in that new role? Um, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's going to be more hurdles to get over. We're going to fall a couple of times. It's squeaky bum time whether we make top four or not. We're still in the FA Cup. Let's, you know, it's, it, it could be it could be a good season out of nothing, or um, we could be you know in for a bit of a disappointment. The, the fact is, it was a really big rebuild job going on, and Conte's at the beginning of it, not not halfway through. Mm-hmm. All right, Ben. Just um, appreciate that, Cooper. Great points, well made, mate. Ben uh, Conte, does he deserve criticism for the decisions he's making? Uh, what's your thoughts? I mean, the reason you get a man, you, there's, there's, you've got to criticise everything. Because if you stop criticising and Conte is given free reign to do what he wants, it's a real problem. And it shows, as much as we like blind delusion, uh, people get it wrong. People make mistakes. Even the best people at what they do make mistakes sometimes. And I felt that we should have gone 3 5 2 against Southampton um, just to suffocate that midfield. But it could have got, uh, on another day, Maybe the players wouldn't have played badly and we'd have won that game because at one point we were two one up. Then it just it all just fell away. I know it was probably um, against the run of play, of course, but another day we might have uh, won that game or got a point out of it. So every manager gets it wrong, and this is he's fledgling into this Tottenham career. He hasn't got the players he needs to do a proper run. So yeah, we can criticise a bad because it, every single player played poorly that game, but. The real time to criticise Conte is after the summer when he's got his team that he thinks he physically needs. Or, yeah, um, yeah that's the time to really criticise him. Because at this moment, he's still trying to work things out with uh, some of the, the terrible players he's got in that team. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah, like, like I say, my take on it, I personally think he is... Um, it's the best we've ever had. But I, don't, I, don't, I think that he's... Oh, this. I'm scratching my head with some of the decisions. I know it's not tough. He definitely he's got a, a you know a squad that if a couple of injuries come along and like they have since the end of the transfer window, Skippy's out, Dyer's out. Suddenly we look threadbare in midfield. Suddenly we like we have you know the same problems in defence. Although we have Dyer out, like we swap Dyer and Romero for who's on the uh, on the um, on the injury table. But I do think you know that you have to factor in injuries throughout the season. But I think injuries are going to dictate our success or failure more than any other club because. With the exception maybe of Arsenal, we are someone whose first eleven is very strong. But as soon as you get a couple of a couple of uh, niggles to any of the, um, the the key positions or players, then you know we have uh, about as much depth as a kiddie pool, right? And it's um, yeah. it's terrible. But I do think that, that Conte's like I say, I think he needs to be a bit more flexible. Fle- he has a bit more flexibility of thought. But who am I? I'm just uh, just an idiot on the channel who keeps making mistakes. With everything that I've done today, with everything, <laughs> I, I think um, I think another thing to always consider as well. Um, it's it's the old cliche of uh, players have got to earn their place on the training pitch. And yeah. With the likes of Winks, you've got to think the amount of games he's had over the years, he must be doing that. He must be convincing managers in training that he's up yeah, for yeah, the yeah, role. Yeah. And, and if you keep doing that on the week week in week out, every day you're working with them, that you. you Getting the trust of your manager, so he's going to pick you. Um, oh, I can see oh, it's kind of been the downfall of Pochettino with uh, Deli Ali. Um, perhaps Winks is a downfall of many a manager. 